In this video, we are going to create an archery game mechanic in Unity. First, we are going to create a bow and an interactive string that we can pull. Next, we are going to create an arrow that we can shoot from our bow and it will bounce off the objects. Lastly, we are going to make sure that we can hit something using our arrow and that the arrow will stick to this object, affecting it in some way. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. In the description of this video, there is a link to my Patreon webpage where you can grab for free the starter project for this video. This is a full project in a zip archive, so just unpack it to a folder on your computer. When you have it ready, just open it in Unity Hub. Here is my folder and just click open. The project was created in Unity 2022.1.3 f1, so you'd need to have at least this version or newer to run this project. It might take a bit of time for Unity to rebuild the library folder, but when it is ready the project should open, and we are going to search for in the assets in the projects tab for the scenes folder, and let's open archery scene, and you should see the after shaders are compiled, a scene that we are going to be using. For this tutorial I will be using Oculus Quest 2 headset connected using the link cable to my computer, so make sure that you connect your headset to your computer before starting the project. Ok, so when you have your headset connected, in the project you can go to the edit and the project settings, a new window should pop up, and in the project settings at the bottom you will find the XR plugin management and we are using OpenXR plugin to connect the headset to the computer. And we have this interaction profiles for HTC Vive and Oculus Touch controller profiles. You can add another profile here if you have a different headset and it is present here. But when you have it all done and you are using one of those headsets that the profile is supported, you can simply go to the scene view and press the play button. Okay, when you are ready and you have your headset connected, you should be able to select the game window in Unity and if you put on the headset, you should see that the camera inside the game moves together with your head. So I'm going to pick up the controllers. Now, the controllers are preset so we can use the grip trigger to perform the grab animation using the hands in our VR project. We can also use the uh, right hand joystick to rotate our character around and we can use the left hand joystick to move around the map. And we are going to start working on making sure that the bow is grabbable so when we press our grip trigger we are going to be able to grab our bow. For now let's stop our project. Okay. Now the links to the assets are in the description. I am using the Kenny assets so the targets and the platform and Quaternius assets there is the bow and there should be in blends the arrow prefab as well as other bows are available. Now I have created my own version of the bow without a string for the purpose of this tutorial. The hand models are from Oculus. There are the models, there is the license, this is the Creative Commons attribution license. So those hands models are from Oculus. Now if you want to learn more about the basics of how this scene was created, Check out my Start VR First Steps video course, which covers how to create grabbing mechanic, teleportation, movement, and other basic mechanics of VR in Unity. The link to the course will be in the description. So let's start working on our bow to be grabbable. So in our hierarchy, we already have bow evil game object. If you press F in your scene view, you will be able to see it. Now, if the gizmo size is too big, select the gizmo icon in the top right corner of the scene view and unchecks 3D uh, icons for the gizmos and they should be smaller. So we have our bow and the bow currently in the inspector we can see that it has a transform, the mesh filter, mesh render and a box collider which will represent the collider for us to be able to grab the bow. What we are going to add here is we are going to select the add component and we are going to type XR grab and we should find XR grab interactable component that will add to the game object, the rigid body as well itself. 
This component is from the XR Interaction Toolkit package that Unity provides for us to make development in VR much easier for us with some presets that they provide. So by adding this XR Grab Interactable component, we will be able to grab this object because in the general stuff, uh, in the hierarchy, we have this XR Origin, which has in turn hands, right and left hand representation. Those are using XR Direct Interactor, which means that when we press our grip trigger on the controller, we are going to be able to grab any object that has a collider as well as the XR Grab Interactable component. Now, we do not care right now about the rigid body, but in the XR Grab Interactable component, we can preset a lot of parameters, and one of them is the Collider's Array. We want to drag our box collider here to this array because later on we are going to add a child object which has a collider and the XR Grab Interactable uses all the colliders that are attached to this game object as well as to child objects for it to work and we do not want that. We only want to grab the bow if we are touching this box collider on the main part of the bow. So this is the reason why we have dragged this collider here to this array. Okay, with this done, let's just press play. Okay, so we have our targets flying in the distance. We can't really do anything with them, but right now we should be able to use the grip trigger on our controller to grab the bow. So let's get our hand close to our bow and let's hold the grip trigger and as you can see, we have grabbed the bow. Now, it is in perfect positioning of the bow. We need to work on that. But right now, if we let go of the bow, it will fall down. If we let go of the grip trigger and we can pick it up again. So let's now start working on improving how we grab the bow. And let's start working on adding a string to the bow. So let's stop our project. Okay. Now to fix how we grab the bow, we need to use one of the parameters of the XR Grab Interactable component and this is at the bottom, it is called Attach Transform. The problem that we are facing is how the bow itself is rotated, that the forward direction of the bow goes up and how our hand model is rotated, uh, so the hand that is in the general stuff, in the XR Origin hand, right hand and left hand, and how it is rotated. So to fix it, I have already created for you in the bow evil in the child as a child object, the attach point. If you select it, you will see in the scene view that it is rotated differently than the bow itself. So if we drag this attach point to the attach transform field of the XR grab interactable, you will see that now we are going to grab the bow correctly. I'm not going to uh, describe how it is set, but basically you need to tweak it a bit and play around with the rotation to find the correct rotation to grab this object in a correct way. Again, I talk more about this and other details in my video course. So let's press play and let's try grabbing the bow now. Okay, we are inside the game. Let's now try grabbing the bow. Okay, and you can see that now it is grabbed pretty much correctly. Now we can tweak this attach point and its rotation and position, but basically now we have this fixed. So let's try working on the string that will be stretched across the ends of the bow. And we are going to later make sure that we can interact with it by pulling it and pushing it towards the bow. So let's stop our project. Now, to create our string for the bow, we're going to use the line render. So we are going to select our bow evil object and I have prepared for you this bow string visualization object. And if we expand it, you will find that it already has uh, the child object and the end one and end two, which are placed on both ends of the bow. We are going to select the bow string visualization object and let's add here a component. Let's type line render. And it should add a line render and it should have already two positions, but we can't really see that. So let's select this uh, game object and in the scene view, let's press F and we are going to see a, a quite a big line or a square that is magenta. So this is because our line render currently has no uh, material assigned. So let's go to our assets in the projects tab. Let's select materials. We are going to right click create and we are going to create a new material and we can call it line material. Okay. And at the top in the inspector, we are going to select the shader. I'm using universal render pipeline. I'm going to find the particles and we are going to select particles unlit. 
And this is our material that we are going to use for our string. So let's select again our bow string visualization. And I'm going to slide down in the inspector to find the materials array at the bottom. And we are going to assign our line material. And you should see that it is now white in the scene view. One more thing that we need to do is we need to select our graph for the width and we are going to set it to be 0.005. Okay, now in the scene view, it should look more like a, a string rather than a thick line or a square. Great. Now, one more setting that we need to set is in the middle of the line render and it is use world space. Because we want our line, or rather our string, to follow our bow, we need to keep it in the object space of the bow. So we are going to uncheck this use world space. Now the line has disappeared from the scene view. Let's select this bow string visualization again. Click F. And we are going to see that the line is now closer to the bow. Last thing that we need to do is to actually attach it to the endpoints of our bow. And for this, we are going to need to have a custom script. So let's go to our assets in the projects tab. Let's select the scripts folder and let's right click here, create a new C sharp script. Let's call it bow string and let's open it up. Great. Let me paste the code here that we are going to be using. Now the code will be available on GitHub. The link will be in the description. If you get lost, you can just visit the GitHub repository and check your code against mine. So the bowstring script will require to have the reference to the endpoints of our bow as well as the reference to the line render. If we want to make sure that the line render is on the object, we can add above the public class definition a require component uh, attribute. And we're going to uh, type type of and we're going to add a line render. OK. So now it will require to have the line render on this component or on this object for the bowstring uh, component to be added to the game object. Now we are going to have a serious field private transform references to the endpoint one and endpoint two for us to be able to create the string between those two endpoints. We are of course going to need a reference to the line render. So we're going to have a private line render line render and we are going to grab it in the awake. So private void awake like line render equals get component line renderer. Okay, so now we have all the data that we need for our string to be created. So we are going to have a public void create string method that will take a vector three with a question mark. So we are going to have a nullable vector three. So this value can be null. We are going to use this later when we are going to create uh, an interactable string, which we can grab and move using our hand. For now, we are going to need to have this as a uh, argument of this method. Next, we are going to use a vector3 array to prepare the points to add them to our line renderer. So those will be line points and we are going to create a new vector3 and the length will depend on this mid position. So we're going to add mid position if this is equal null. Uh, if this is the question mark, so this is the ternary operator. If this is true, we are going to set the uh, length of this vector3 array to 2. If this is false, so midpoint is passed and it is not null, we are going to set the length of this array to be 3. Next, we are going to set the line points 0, so the first value, to the endpoint one dot local position, since we are using the local space for the line renderer to be created, so we need to pass the local position. If the mid position is not null, we're going to set the first value or the index one of the line points to be the transform and we need to convert the mid position value to the local uh, coordinate system of this uh, game object. So we're going to use transform.inverse transform point, which converts the world space to local space and we are going to pass mid position dot value to get the value of this vector three. And now we do not know how long is this array. Is it two or three points? So we are going to use this dash one uh, index, which allows us to grab the last position of this. If we pass here two, we are going to get the second to last point. We want to get the last position because we need to set it to the end points two dot local position. So this is how we are going to create our string. Now to pass this data at our line renderer, we need to have two lines. 
line render dot position count equals line points dot length so we need to pass this to the position count and we need to set line render dot set points we are going to pass here our vector three array of line points to actually assign the values to our line render and in the start method to so private void start we are going to call create string with value null so we only have two points we are going to create the string between those endpoints of our bow okay great if you have it all typed or you can copy it from the github make sure that you save this script let's go back to our project okay now let's select our bow string visualization let's minimize the line render let's drag here our bow string component and we need to assign here the endpoints. So we already have them end one and end two. Let's assign them. They can be assigned in any way because the string will always be created between those two points with a midpoint when we reach this point of the tutorial. For now, we should be able to press play. Okay. So now we should be able to grab our bow and we should be able to see that it has the string attached to both ends of the bow. Now we can't really interact with it because we haven't really created this mechanic yet but now we have our string so our bow looks much better. In the next video we are going to make sure that we can interact with our string when we grab it using our other hand. Okay, see you in the next video.